So uh, yesterday, or the other day, I finished the book called On Buddhism by Keiji Nishitani. Keiji Nishitani is a Japanese philosopher from the uh, early, mid 20th century, and he worked under the kind of umbrella of the Kyoto School. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Kyoto School of Japanese, Japanese philosophy, it is this group of people, who are this, or these kind of collection of thinkers and philosophers who tried to um, assimilate and to meld um, Western philosophy, which had you know lots of history up to that point, with the Eastern ways of thinking. It was just kind of this East and West thing, and they were trying to really um, combine them into uh, a more rigorous and more, and more um, I guess, a different way of seeing the world and all this stuff. And I think Keiji Nishitani worked under um, Nishida, and he. For a period of time, he studied under Martin Heidegger, you know, the guy who wrote Being and Time, Being of Time, Being and Time. Uh, he was very interested in, you know, more ontological things as well. But anyway, so I was reading this book on Buddhism. The reason why I picked it up was I was actually at the library and I was looking for another book. I was trying to read more about uh, Chan Bu I read a book recently about Chan Buddhism and I was wanting to read more about the Zen Buddhism and all this stuff, Buddhist stuff, because I don't know anything about Buddhism, so I wanted to read more about that. and. Uh, I just happened to, you know, I was looking for a book by Keiji Nishitani called The Self-Overcoming of Nihilism, which I'm still trying to, I haven't started reading it. Uh, I want to see where I guess he tries to dispel nihilism with nihilism itself, which I'm not really sure how he does it, but I, I want to read it. But as on the bookshelf beside it was this book called On Buddhism, which apparently was a collection of his, um, it's actually more of like a collection of... Uh, this week-long um, seminar of sorts where he gave a bunch of speeches and talks about his, what he perceived as a state of how Buddhism was today and how he thinks it should be uh, changed and what aspects of modernism he thought were, uh, for lack of a better word, um, problematic. Uh, so, you know, as someone who wasn't very familiar with Buddhist tenets and Buddhist um, scriptures and all of this stuff i there definitely were parts of the book especially when he would uh speak about specific japanese terms um and word uh, uh etymologies between japanese chinese um and german uh uh words uh, there are parts of it obviously where i had a difficult time kind of keeping track of but you know uh, the gist of what he was trying to say i think was very um much uh, translated very well and he speaks very lucidly and the translation is pretty good so from what I understand so the first half or the first chapter or two of the book is about what he thinks how he thinks Buddhism should change or should adapt he criticizes Buddhism because it it has been so rigid over the last several centuries that it hasn't really taken into account uh, a lot of the, for lack of a better term, mar modernist um, mo um, ways of thinking and movements that have uh, come out over the last century or so, uh, two centuries or so. Uh, for one, I think he mentioned three of them. I can't remember them all right now off the top of my head. One of them was Buddhism doesn't uh, take into account the sciences, natural sciences. The natural sciences have no place in any kind of Buddhist um, way of thinking. Uh, they don't have a way of um, engaging with the natural sciences. Another one, I think, is um, ethical, um, just ethics in general, human ethics. Uh, I think Buddhism, from what I understand, um, works in a way in which it removes itself from the need to kind of engage with ethics. And for other people, for critics of Buddhism, they find that problematic because human ethics is a big... Uh, aspect of human living and to completely remove oneself from that uh, is maybe not as conducive to living um, in the present world as you know as others and there was a third one which I can't remember off the top of my head but essentially he was trying to say that you know a lot of these over the last 200 years or so lots of modern um, ideas and ways of um, living have come up and he thinks Buddhism should uh, try to uh, grapple with them 
uh, engage with them uh, and just adapt more. So that's the first part of the book. And then the, the other, and he obviously he goes into more detail about each of those things and how he thinks it should happen and, or at least the direction in which people should be moving towards. And then he also critiques a lot of modernism a lot of he critiques the United States in particular. He is towards the end of the book, you know. He, but in general, he says, you know, uh, there, there's a, he talks about the issues of uh, spirituality being lost um, in the United States, for example. This idea of secularist, um, the direction that secularism has come, kind of moved towards. Uh, in the, it, it, it has removed a lot of the sanctity. I think he doesn't use the word sanctity, but. There's a, he, he speaks a lot about um, the importance of religious life. He cites, um, I can't remember, it sucks I can't remember these things right now, but he cites, I forgot who it was, but he said there were like these three things that are um, anywhere, but what else does he say? He says a lot of very interesting things, um, made me question. He, so he, a lot of the, what I found interesting about the book was that he speaks about Buddhism in a way that as a Buddhist, he doesn't necessarily fight so much to say that Buddhism is the one right and everything else is wrong. He, in fact, he actually very um, seamlessly and meticulously incorporates um, Christianity in his speaking and he kind of equates, um, it doesn't equate, but he uses similar references to the deities and gods uh, in both uh, Christianity and Buddhism as a kind of a commonality. And he kind of criticizes the West and especially particularly the United States because of... Um, because of how Puritanism has moved people away from certain um, ideas about what one should be doing. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, you should check it out.